What's up guys, welcome back to another video and in this video we are going to be talking about uh, HTTP guys. Now I have made around uh, three videos so far, one was to talk about the basics and uh, in the other two we talked about uh, a lot of UI components, right? Uh, lists, dialogs, tabs, stuff like that, the uh, stuff that you would see on the screen. Whereas HTTP is for making external network requests, right? So you are making a HTTP request from your application over the network, getting back some data and you are using the data in your uh, application or you are sending the data over the network using the HTTP protocol uh, and maybe storing some data or uh, doing something like that, right? So uh, HTTP basically plays an important role in any modern application, right? Whether it be mobile or uh, desktop or uh, web or whatever. Now let's see a very basic implementation of how to make a HTTP request from your application, uh, how to handle the received data. Okay, we'll just see how to receive the data first. Uh, and then if time permits, we'll see how to handle the data as well in a, uh, in a pretty way. Okay. Now I scaffolded out uh, an application. That's it. Nothing new in this. This is already seen this a lot of times. Now uh, let's add some imports, import package. Uh, HTTP, I think it's HTTP, yeah, HTTP, HTTP dot dot, okay. Uh, what we lose, we have, we, uh, this scaffold is blank, there's nothing, we are not returning anything and uh, everything else is just the same uh, as in the basic application that you would get when you try to create one. We'll add a function, okay. Uh, future. We already talked about future, right? It's like uh, values appearing over a period of time. It's like getting values over stream, S something like that. Something like observables, okay? Similar to observables, but not exactly observables. Uh, uh, future string, um, sorry, future string uh, make request, okay? And this is a function. Uh, now data would be appearing asynchronously, asynchronously since you are making a HTTP request, right? So in, in case you are asynchronous in the sense, uh, in case your net connection is slow, okay? So your request will be made and after some time your response would be received, right? So in that case we need to uh, tell the application to wait, make this request and wait. So we need to specify a async keyword here and then use an award, await, wait, I'll show you. Uh, Oh, what's this future? Yeah, that we need to import something else. I think. Yeah, that dot dot async. Uh, 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 we'll have a URL. We'll may try to make a request to this random user dot me. We'll get a random user, a single random user. So I'll copy this and then have it here. String URL equals this. Oh, sorry. This. Okay, and inside our function, inside our function, what I'll do is uh, uh, where response equals HTTP. I didn't uh, give an alias, right? As HTTP. Okay, I'm aliasing that. So HTTP dot get get request, right? Uh, URI. URI dot encode full and the uh, URL this URL that we are about to pass okay this is one thing and then we can send in headers as well similar to a normal HTTP request you will send uh, authentication stuff keys etc in your headers you will send uh, application what kind of application that you uh, want to you will, uh, I mean like there there is a special field called accept right in that you can specify what type of data uh, this uh, a request will accept as a response stuff like that so I'll uh, add headers as well headers is an object uh, I'll pass in one header alone accept oh, I'll bring this to the next line accept uh, colon application slash JSON okay uh, and we this we won't be receiving in real time my clock whenever i start to do a video my clock starts timing guys 
we will be getting at a later point of time right in case the uh, your net connection is slow so you will need uh, to write a uh, await keyword here you understand this right this is an important uh, thing that's been newly flying around with ever since es6 was introduced guys this async can await uh, await uh, it's like for it's the newer version of promises earlier we if you are a hardcore object oriented javascript guy or something you might have remember uh, you might remember the promises concept right you will give in a promise for while handling an asynchronous request and then once you resolve that promise you will get some data which you will be making use of in your application cool right the same concept it's uh, is a newer version you are saying that this function is going to be an async function here and then you are asking here asking this particular variable to wait for this particular uh, thing to get finished so once this is finished and a response is received that response will be stored here in the uh, var response uh, variable cool right you get it now this is the thing of async and await not await await uh, there are a lot of explanatory stuff available over the internet for this uh, kindly go through it anyway let's move on with what we were trying to achieve uh, in the beginning uh, now that we have the response all we need to do is print it and see uh, what's the response that we get so print uh, response dot body cool we have done nothing we are simply requesting getting a making a get request here and the response would look something like this right uh and we are just making the get request here and then trying to print the response body now we need something to make this request right we need to perform an action to make that request so what i'll do is i'll bring in a button that's a simple thing i'll bring in a button uh return new scaffold uh, body new raised button child new text uh make request make request on first uh auto set make request right make request this is not needed cool we have a uh, button in the body which upon clicking which upon tapping will call this function once this function is called it will simply response it will print a response in our uh, console which we will be able to see now in a minute so let's run this cool our app has loaded fine right it's uh oh it's in the corner wait and make a simple adjustment hmm. now it's in the middle right i'm in center so i'll just tap on this and let's see what happens we should basically see the request response sorry wow you can see the response here right in your uh, you get a results gender female name exactly like this response that you would uh, you, you you are supposed to get so we get a expected response when we try to make a http request right this is how you perform a basic very basic http uh, request from your flutter apps guys now let's try to like uh, get some data from this is too much data for example the name alone we have title uh, first name and last name right we will try to get the first name okay Uh, we can't exactly get this exact first name since each and every time we make the request there will be some new data returned i guess for instance uh, let's try it out uh, we get the first name as elli here right i'll make another request this time we get the name as abby see you can see this right so each and every time we'll get a different first name that that's not our issue here let's try to uh, extract this first name alone from this uh, code so in order to uh like decode this json you would need another package let's go ahead and import that as well import dart the good thing about dart is that there are a large amount of packages already written and available for use guys so you can just go ahead and use the convert uh, or convert uh, how will you pronounce it uh package so i'll use that and then instead of printing the response dot uh, body what i'll do is i'll create a list data okay some uh, a list variable and uh, inside this list what i'll do is uh, uh, where extract data equals uh, json 
dot decode uh, response dot body okay and uh, data equals extract data of uh, results inside that okay this i'll close finish this then uh, print uh, data of zero of name of first let's run this now you understand what i'm doing here right the results returns an array so the first element of the array i'm selecting here as zero and uh, inside that array i need this specific uh, name field right so i'm giving the name field here and inside this name field i need this is again an object you can see this right this is again an object with uh, three key value pairs one is title another one is first and the other one, last one is last and the third one is last so uh, i am giving zero here and the name here to select this and uh, first here to select that particular key value pair let's go ahead and uh, see what happens now i'll try to make a request now see you get a first name tim cool right you understand what's happening here so if i just give name alone you will get three uh, three what's that uh, key value pairs saying uh, title first and uh, last see title first and last right so you understand how to uh, pull in specific data from that particular json request uh, json response as well right so we saw how to make a http request simple http request uh, we saw how to take that response decode that response into a json format and then uh, take data that we need from that particular response in this video we saw that in our next video what we'll see is we'll see how to make this data that we extract appear in our screen in a pretty way as of now we are just printing it on the console what's the use of that right uh, and in our screen we just have a, a dummy button that <laughs> that triggers the request in our next video we'll see how to print that particular data on the screen in a uh, in a pretty way okay in a pretty way so yeah guys uh, if you like this video kindly hit the like button if you like what I'm doing on this channel, kindly subscribe to this channel uh, to see more cool videos like this. If you found this video helpful particularly, share it with someone and help them too. So yeah, talk to you guys in my next video. Bye.